How's it going, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Two Nerds a Podcast. I'm Buddy the Bruiser. And I'm Dynamite Jared Latchy. Quit playing with that fucking kazoo. We are doing a very professional podcast. You're over there playing with bottle caps, kazoos. I know two very famous people that got very over by using kazoos. Oh, yeah? Edge and Christian. All right. All right. Fair enough. So, um, very first, the first thing we need to talk about in this episode... Um, as Jared made a very big mistake last <laughs> week, and I didn't want to call him out on it on the podcast. And so he's going to say he's going to wait a week and, and then said, call me out on the podcast said, the next week. And so I tell him privately and then call him out on the podcast next week and make it even more humiliating. So, Jared. Well, all right. So I've already apologized to Aubrey. I'm never going. I think I apologized to you already via text message. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> so as it turns out, um, my bir- I got my birthday gifts mixed up, mixed up last week because, fuck, because um, Buddy got Ash vs. Evil Dead season one shipped to my house directly for my birthday. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aubrey put her birthday gifts in my mailbox that day. And so that day I went to check my mail because Aubrey texted me and was like, hey, I put your gifts in the mail. Happy birthday and all that stuff. And so I thought that Aubrey got me like the mother load, like seriously got me the Rob Lowe freaking Rob Lowe's like newest novel. I believe it's his newest Um, a card, a Chipotle gift card and Ash versus Evil Dead. But Buddy sent me Ash versus Evil Dead and even had like a little message in the uh envelope or whatever bubble mailer or whatever it came in and um i didn't see the message because i just opened the package and immediately saw ash versus evil dead and i was like all right yes (laughs) and then just moved on with my day so (sighs) issuing a public apology a public apology to buddy to aubrey and to all the listeners out there (laughs) of two nerds a podcast for for mistaking the presence because i was very concerned because at first i thought that aubrey just got you the same thing i did and my thing got lost in the mail or some shit so i was like looking on amazon i was like did it get delivered like what the hell went down so i asked aubrey i was like what you get jared and it was not ash versus the evil dead it was not so i was like all right (laughs) it was definitely rob lowe's book which i intend on reading rob lowe's a beautiful man and if we would have had something for cocktober that he would have qualified for he would have lost because he would have been my pick yeah probably would have lost pretty bad um but anyway um this well this past weekend was the any geek expo and me and jared were there we gave a sold out panel discussion it was absolutely a packed house people came just for our panel yeah it was crazy and and then they left never to be seen again yeah i mean if you want to see the photo of the panel they actually weren't able to be photographed because they were just there for the panel. I don't know if they were ghosts or they were Amish. They just somehow got themselves photoshopped out of this picture somehow. Some type of spirits. Some sort of spirits. I don't know what the deal was, but they're not in this picture. Um, there's only a few humans in that picture. So those are the only ones that were actually alive. So, um, Jared, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the expo just in general? Uh, the expo was cool, man. Uh, I bought a Gundam model from tony and um i don't know there's some cool cosplay going on there aubrey had a really cool judge dread cosplay she actually won for best female best female yeah um so you know that's my friend and (laughs) uh uh, there was that cool nightmare cosplay uh that one girl (laughs) had the cool uh link cosplay yeah that is in our video uh I don't know, man. Cool cosplay, uh, cool vendors. They had some cool stuff out. Uh, that one guy had the freaking Bark at the Moon Ozzy, like yeah. two foot figure. Yeah, it was awesome. That played the thing only for thirty five dollars, and all you geeks out there aren't even that cool because nobody even like really looked at it. I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they did. I didn't ask the guy. I mean, I looked at it, and then at the end of the day, it was still there. I'm pretty sure. So. You guys apparently didn't look hard enough because thirty five dollars was a good price that I would have paid if I had the money, but I didn't. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who were at the expo, you know it was a really good time. If you weren't able to make it, I did make a video about the expo, um, which you can find on the channel and you can click in the description uh, to see it. Um, 
Everyone said they really liked the video. So yeah, the video was cool, and I uh, think that it made the expo seem a little bit cooler than it actually was. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, the video was cool. The expo was cool. Hopefully, um, we'll be there again next year. Hopefully, we'll have a panel again, and hopefully, some more non some more mortals will show up and <laughs> check it out. We had it kind of early in the day. And we were the opening act for, um, what's his face? I forget his name. You have his card. I do. Not with me, though. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> but anyways, any Geek Expo is fun. If you guys haven't heard of it, uh, check out our video and uh, try and go there next year. It happens every year in October. I don't know if it'll be an expire at not at expire. Not at expire. I don't no. know if it'll be at, at the, spire. The spire. At spire next year, or if expire will be playing at the Any Geek Expo next year. I'm not sure, but hopefully we'll be there again. I mean, I'm pro- I'm about 99.9 percent sure that I'll be there again. But um, I don't know. I might just say fuck Jared and not show up. Yeah, so. I mean, I go pretty much every year for the past few years. I make an appearance. This year I was there, like it was kind of business the whole day. So, but it was still fun, and I uh, got to hang out with some of my friends, some of the local geeks. So that was cool. It was fun. Also, this week we had our final spooky episode of Lost on VHS come out. Um, there's a full um, playlist on my YouTube channel, so you can see all four episodes. Um, if you watch them all together, it's about 20 minutes or so. So basically, your typical half hour show minus the commercials on TV. So, um, it was a lot of fun to do this last week. We reviewed the brain, um, which is a movie I've wanted to watch since about 2010 or 2009, basically ever since I heard of it. Jared saw it a few years ago, um, was a dick and didn't invite me over to watch it, even though he knew I wanted to. Um, but I finally saw it and we did our video about it. Um, and yeah. Yeah, they turned out pretty good. And I think that the reception from the, like 40 people that have watched all of them have has been pretty positive i know that uh dan said that they were not bad which is high praise coming from him <laughs> and he's made a couple of uh, vhs review videos himself and they're pretty good uh his are pretty good uh he has like the whole i i've only watched one of them but the one was for hell roller which is a shot on video slasher movie about a guy in a wheelchair that kills people oh man and um we got a train. I we don't do. Know if the mics are picking it up, but we're gonna power through it. Um, we'll take it out in post. You can't take it out in post. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I watched the Hell Roller one, and like, and it's kind of like an angry video game nerd episode, like one of the later ones where there's like a story going on beyond, like when he plays like the Halloween game or whatever, and I Michael Myers like comes up behind the couch or whatever and does the whole thing while he's playing it. It's kind of like that. I think they do some stuff with a wheelchair while they're watching the damn movie. And so it's um pretty good stuff. So check out uh, VH Shitfest on um, YouTube, but check out our videos first. And um, uh, we will probably have – we've said it a million times. We're going to have Dan on the podcast pretty soon. He's home for the foreseeable future now, I think, so – we can definitely get into that. Um, I've been noticing on Twitter uh, that we may be having, maybe getting a couple new listeners to the podcast. Twitter, Facebook, and some people that have been telling me. I just want to remind everybody that, you know, if you're listening, driving to work or whatever, you know, you're out and about listening to the podcast, you don't have to use YouTube. You don't have to use up all your data. Unless you have unlimited data, then you, you go do ahead. you. Yeah. yeah, go for it. But uh, we have downloadable links in the description still, right? You're yeah. still doing yeah. that? So, okay. I haven't posted on, I haven't posted one of these in a while. So, Well, I've never posted on YouTube, but I made like the first couple on Archive. But uh, archive.org, all of our episodes are on there. So you can download them. I don't know if you can download straight to your phone with that website, like on an iPhone. I've never actually downloaded from it. I've just uploaded it for yeah. people to download. So. so I don't know if you can down. I but you it can definitely be, download to your computer, and then USB to your phone, your smartphone, 
and then go from there. That is definitely an option because it's MP3. Yeah. So you should be good to go. And so that way you don't have to use all your data. You can, uh, you know, take us on the go with you and listen. Take us everywhere. Take us everywhere. Wherever you want to go. Show your fucking friends without wasting any of your data (laughs) or searching for Wi-Fi. Like, hey, man, I really want to show you this cool podcast. But But we have to go to the McDonald's (laughs) down the street because I'm out of data. None of that. Have it on your phone already. Archive.org. The link is in the YouTube description. And hopefully one day we will be on an actual podcasting website. If you guys keep listening to us and keep spreading the word and we get enough listeners, maybe we'll get some hype and be able to do something like that. Yeah, podcast of, one will pick us up. Yeah, yeah who fucking <laughs> nice, knows? Nice try. We'll be part of the Jericho Network on podcast oh, man. one. <laughs> All right. So uh, like two weeks ago, we saw Shin Godzilla and um, it was something. I saw Shin Godzilla. Jared saw the inside of his eyelids in some parts of Godzilla. I saw but mostly, Godzilla. Mo- I saw his, Godzilla. Mostly as I. I mean, bef- let's. I let's, probably had a better viewing experience than Buddy did. Oh yeah, you had a better viewing experience because I woke up a little bit that you did. I woke up and saw Godzilla, and then when people came on the screen, I said, "I'm gonna, tur- I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna turn myself off for a little bit until, until Godzilla comes by again, and I'll have my." trusty ally buddy here nudge me like when he's snoring a little too loud and we're getting looks from the other people but he's like Gojira. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah godzilla versus the politicians not even i was he i don't think he was aware of the politicians it was more he the, was definitely not aware of the politicians but they were sure as fuck aware of him so this movie can basically be broken up into two sections one section is godzilla and the other section is boardroom meetings, which is the majority of the film. It's basically basically all they're talking about is trying to take down Godzilla, but do it in sort of a legal way. I don't know. Like it just seems stupid to me that they're trying to figure out this whole time like how to do this legally when it's like obviously the law is not something like Godzilla. It's not something they plan for. Yeah, Godzilla is not something the law accounted for. You know what I mean? So like it just seems so stupid to me that when you have a giant lizard terrorizing your city that you have to like go through all what is it? Do they call the in, red tape or whatever. They call in like it's not PETA, but they call in like some like animal activists, don't they? I can't remember. They call in someone like, Oh shit, someone's gotta meet with the the animal activists and it's oh, just no, them in they, like this little boardroom. That's um that was near the beginning and it was yeah. just like three like expert biologists or something like that. And, like, basically the joke was that the biologists were stumped. <laughs> and so they were just sitting in this meeting and no one even knew what to say. And the guys were just sitting there. And then, like, the biologists all had, like, their really stupid fucking, like, theories that didn't, you know, obviously were not true. And then the one that was, like, a college student was like, oh, yeah, this is, uh, like, she kind of knew more than, like, the big time guys did. Yeah, so but, but, uh, should we just talk about Godzilla himself? I mean, we can skip the plot because it's Godzilla attacking a town. That's pretty much it. So there's not much to say. Uh, oh, it's, the plot is basically Godzilla falls asleep in a town, much like me. Well, that's a little late. That's a little later. That's like that's, I'd say about a quarter into the movie, Godzilla passes out. Yeah, and stays passed out until For the final long- quarter of the movie. True. True. But let's just talk about this first iteration of Godzilla. Um, if you don't want the movie spoiled for you, uh, fucking, I don't know. Don't see the movie, but um, <laughs> actually see it. It's not that bad. But um, yeah, spoiler territory. A lot um, of people right liked now. it. A lot, of people, a lot of people really liked it. Liked it. I, didn't. I thought I thought it was I mean, decent. I liked it because it's a Godzilla movie. And like, no matter what, except for Godzilla's Revenge. There's like always some sort of redeeming factor in a Godzilla movie, and it comes in the form of a 400 foot tall lizard. So, what about a 400 foot long slug? <laughs> With was, the was, the, was, was, that, eyes. was that in your plan? No, it wasn't. So, so basically, but I knew something was up when he was in the shallow water, and all you could see was his spines kind of hanging out of the water. Yeah. So I was like, man, he seems kind of small. And I read on the internet that this is supposed to be the biggest Godzilla ever. Right. Which 
up until Shin Godzilla was the American Godzilla was the biggest one because we're American and everything has to be big. Yeah. So Toho was like, fuck that. We're making it bigger. And... We're making a bigger Godzilla, but they didn't start with a bigger Godzilla. So so basically the premise, well, this movie ignores all the Godzilla movies that took place before it. So this is a 100% retelling of the story. The one in the 50s, which is usually the one where they pick it up from, like the original and the yeah, rest I'd are say, sequels. I'd say I think that this is the first time. It's been 100% retold. By Toho. Yeah. By Toho. By Toho, like, 100%. America's done it like for the first time twice. In Godzilla 98, and then in the newest Godzilla, were both, like, his first appearances. Except they kind of hint towards the 54 one and the American one that they see Godzilla in 1954. There's that archive footage or whatever yeah, yeah, from yeah. the nuclear testing, and you kind of see, like, his back or something. But, um... But this is the first one by Toho to say, fuck the original, this is... This is what's going on. Don't fuck the original. Well, that's <laughs> you know what I mean. But in this, so in this movie, Godzilla doesn't start out the way you would expect. Um, he actually has to evolve into the Godzilla that we know and love. Um, and he starts out. I don't even know. How, like I said, he's like a slug. He has no arms, or no he arms has that legs. are. He, he has they, legs. They're not usable at this point. They're just there. They're he has hands. They're, they're cosmetic. He doesn't even have arms. He has hands that just kind of hang out of his torso, basically. And he's one. I think they say he's one hundred percent brain dead at this point. <laughs> so he's just. So he's just this. He, dumb, yeah, he's just like this dumb sack of shit, just crawling, sli- slithering through the town with blank dead eyes that look like googly eyes you can get at the dollar store, <laughs> and he just fucking tears apart the town i don't he's know just basic yeah he basically crawls around or slithers around or rolls around and like fucking like headbutts buildings until they fall over and like runs people over because like and he's like small he's like not yeah i mean he's not like small he's still a giant monster but he's more like i'd say he's probably beast of ten thousand fathoms size yeah or is it twenty thousand fathoms the beast from Twenty thousand fathoms. Right, I, think. From 20, I think it's 20, fathoms. I think it's twenty thousand. Which is weird. Didn't that movie come out a year before Godzilla did? Yeah, it came out because because right. Godzilla was event was supp- originally supposed to be stop motion because that's how the beast from twenty thousand fathoms yeah. stop motion and basically the effects guy and that was Harryhausen, right? Yeah, All right. and the effects guy from Godzilla was like, yeah, we can do it in stop motion, but I'm gonna need like six years. So they obviously have a, they have some stop motion in that movie, but like they wanted the whole yeah, thing yeah. to be stop motion. Um, I think that they have some stop, like some of his uh, uh yeah, there's some stuff with uh, I think with his tail and like a train or something that's like stop motion, but um, you know, that would have been cool, but in the end, in the original Godzilla, that suit effect I think is pretty damn effective. So in the original yeah for sure um so, but what what do you think the reasoning was to have him start out as this slug and not just start out as godzilla so like, like, i like what, thought that what they were going to do was is that they were just going to nuke the fucking slug and but I why would you even as a person making a film a new serious iteration of the Godzilla. Well, listen, to be- I, I like, I don't get it, but like, if you wanted to start like that, this is how I would do it is not give him googly eyes. Like I would give him like serious, lizard eyes, serious lizard eyes or something, not fucking dummy eyes. And then like, and, and nuke him because Godzilla is the product of nuclear testing yeah. And so they were going to nuke him. Well, at least this is what I thought when he appeared. I thought, okay, he's destroying the city. Their idea is going to be let's nuke him because there's nothing else is working. And then what would happen was the nuclear energy would make him bigger, stronger, and turn into like, the actual Godzilla. And turn into yeah. full Godzilla. That's not what happened. No. What happened was is that he has this ability where he can evolve at will 
And so, like, he's just kind of, like, going through the city looking like a dummy. And then, like, he eventually stands up, gets a little bit bigger. And they're like, oh, my God, he can evolve whenever he wants to. And he ends up going back into the ocean, crawling back into the ocean. And then he comes back later, and he's just fully evolved into Godzilla. Yeah. I won't, uh, maybe not fully evolved because they say he can evolve at will. So God knows what would happen if he had just kept evolving. Turns into Desa Troya looking fucking oh, spra- sprouts oh, wings. Turns into Mecha Godzilla. Oh man. Just turns into, I don't know if he can turn himself into metal, but. You never, I mean, self evolution is not something that like happens very often. So who knows how that works. I don't, I don't know how it works. You know how it works? I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works, but I, you know, where I come from, Godzilla gets bombed and then he turns big. That's that's how it's always been. But, um, so yeah, that's what I thought they were going to do. It's not the route they took. And so basically what we end up with is just this really stupid looking Godzilla creature for no fucking reason. There's I mean, no I know, re- I know, I laughed when I first saw. Yeah, it. Yeah, I laughed. I but everyone. the rest of the movie has like this really serious tone, ex- except for a couple of the board meetings. Yeah, like there's a little comic relief um, from the human characters, but that was the only part like with Godzilla that I was laughing my ass off when I saw him. So, like the first movie is like kind of scary, actually. Yeah, the original. It, yeah, and so like. The the first movie, at least to me, when I still watch it, I still get this like this like feeling of like what would it be like to really like encounter a giant monster and like how scary that would be if you're just like kind of like driving around and you look over at the, the skyline of the city and all of a sudden you see this fucking big ass head like peek over a building or something like and you know and then there's then there's a uh, there's another feeling in that movie too when you see the debris and everything that like really kind of captures like the horror of like nuclear war and like the shots of like the destroyed tokyo always like bear like kind of a uh, like very strong resemblance to the photos that you'll see of like hiroshima or Nagasaki after they were bombed in World War II. Right, right. So, and that was the intention. Yeah, for, but well, that's um, how Godzilla was made because of the the nuclear bombs. So, so, yeah, but you know that I didn't get any of that in this movie because you know when he shows up, he just looks so stupid, and it just took you Completely took me out, out of the it. moment. Like I was like, okay, he looks stupid, and by the time he came around again. It was just another Godzilla movie at that point that he was just kind of coming out of the water like he always does. You already knew that there was a giant monster, and they wasted his first appearance by making him look really stupid. And then when he shows up in full form, he it's falls like, asleep. It's like there's Godzilla, and then he like tears the city apart for about yeah, all of like five minutes, and then he goes to bed in the middle of the town. And then, yeah, and he then just everyone falls just falls asleep keeps... in the middle of the town, and, and then the rest just, of the movie is them live, trying to plan around it. And they just, people in this town just continue to live their lives around Godzilla. Do city. they? I was asleep. Well, they encourage a lot of people to evacuate, but not a lot of people do. I remember that there were still the protesters in town. Yeah. Like when Godzilla was asleep, and they're like, oh, save Godzilla. Like, don't <laughs> kill Godzilla. Whatever. The damn vegans. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, Shin Godzilla, check it out if you um if you're into Godzilla movies. But don't go in with too high of expectations. Get ready for a lot of talking and not much Godzilla. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go into it thinking that you're getting a big classic. Um or really any I mean I got a little sense of nostalgia when I was watching it, but still it wasn't enough to really save it um it's the first time that i like really 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 and like i like i like when other monsters fight godzilla but i've always actually really wanted another godzilla movie where he kind of stands alone and takes it like takes himself seriously as like he's a threat 
you know, to the city. At, at the beginning, when there was this slug creature thing and you didn't really see who it was yet, I thought that's who Godzilla was about to fight. I knew it was like a standalone thing, or at least that's how it was marketed, but I thought they were pulling a fast one on us, and then it just turned out to be a shitty Godzilla once you saw the face of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've wanted a movie like this for a while, and it kind of disappointed me. And so this is the first time that I saw like a standalone Godzilla movie where I was just like, man, I really wish another monster would show up <laughs> right now. I <laughs> like wake Godzilla up and then they would start fighting, but that didn't happen. So yeah, um, it's uh, our last episode before it was basically our Halloween episode. Yeah, because it's is... two days until Halloween. We've been watching a lot of horror movies. I have. I'm I've getting. Watched, I've I'm, watched a couple. I'm getting yeah. quite sick of it, frankly. <laughs> like, See, I could, not I, horror movies, but just movies in general. Like, oh, just I'm movies like, in general, I yeah. like don't want to watch any more movies for a while after this month is over. Halloween. I'm. I think I'm pulling like a triple feature on Halloween. I'm watching my movie of the day for 31 days of horror, where you can check out all my reviews on rewinderdiavhs.blogspot.com. The link will probably be in the description. It always is. And like, um, and so, uh, this week I watched fucking, well, right now I'm in the middle of watching The Devil Bat with Bella Lugosi. Yeah, we, we paused it about mid, yeah. midway through to come record this. Only real midway? Fast. Well, how long, how long were you watching it before I showed up? I don't know. I feel like two people have died. It's black and white. I feel like we should be coming up on the end here pretty soon. I don't. I, how long were you watching it before I showed up? Like ten minutes. Oh, so it's still got another like fifteen, twenty, probably. Yeah. Hopefully it ends soon. I have to review it still, and I'm going to the <laughs> Indians watch party tonight. So. Oh boy. At least it's warm out. Yeah, it is. Kind of. So, but um, go tribe. Um, let's see. <laughs> You're not watching tonight, are you, buddy? Did you watch last night? I watched a little bit of it, and they still won. Okay, they still so won. So, the so th I the curse. I I must have just been because basically, like when I did this, the same thing during the Cavs game, um, when they were in the playoffs. Um, every time I would watch a game, they'd lose. So I just stopped watching because I was like, all right, if I don't watch, they're gonna win. And so then, you didn't watch Game Seven? No, I watched Money in the Bank. I okay. watched it. I watched Game Seven after. Okay, but. Um, so I did it out of respect for all of us. Respect, <laughs> respect. <laughs> um, so, anyways, yeah, I'm watching the Devil Bat now. Yesterday, I watched the Corpse Grinders. Um, what else have I watched this week? Do you remember any of them? This week, uh, they're all starting to blend together to me. We watched one on Wednesday. I can't remember what it was called. Tw oh, I was watched shitty. I watched, shitty. I watched a pretty decent anthology movie this week called After Midnight. And um the first like so like it's kind of weird cuz it didn't seem like an anthology at first and I didn't read about it or anything. I just grabbed it and put it in because it was an hour and a half. And so like it starts off the wraparound starts off like really long. It hmm. starts off like an actual like probably like 15 minute introduction to the movie. I would say and so, like, you got 15 minutes of movie, of wraparound, and then, like, it goes into the first story. So, like, when it goes into the first story, you've been watching this one story for 15 minutes already. I'm just kind of like, oh, wow, this is an anthology movie? You don't usually say that 15 minutes in. It's usually, like, five minutes, and then they go into their first story. Yeah. Or so. Or, like, Creep Show. It's... We're like you it's know, like five. It's like five minutes in Creep Show. Well, Creep like, Show, you know, it's an anthology. Who is it? Tom Atkins is the dad in Creep yeah, Show. Yeah, like reading comes the comics. He's like, stop reading those damn comics. So like, yeah, the kid goes to bed, but he like keeps reading the comics anyways, and like that's like where the stories go. I've always wanted to make an anthology movie. That's like one of my they, things they, that I would want to do. They can be really fun because you can fit like three ideas in there, and it's short. Like the idea of an anthology movie to me is like, is really nice and easy to watch because it's just like three stories that you don't like ever get like mentally exhausted because it's just like they're short and to the point. Yeah. And so it's like, like you, you get into it, it gets into the rising action pretty early and then like climax it's over. 
and then, and then you, you got go another one next one so like and and you know what you can even pause it and like all right that story is over i can pause it go do something else and then come back and go to it just anything so the concept of an anthology movie is a good thing a lot of times it doesn't turn out very good though like no. i've seen some really bad anthology horror movies where it's just like man um i don't even remember like stories from half of the fucking anthology movies i'm gonna ask you about an anthology movie that i've gotten a lot of people who have they either like it or they hate it um and i've never really talked to you about it nor have i known have you actually seen it have you seen trick or treat yeah yeah what did you think about it? i think it's okay I've never seen anybody that hates it. Honestly, everyone I know loves a, it. I know a ton of people who really, really hate that movie. I know a ton of people that are like, oh, yeah, trick or treat. Oh, oh, oh. Like, you know, I've like, never heard anyone say that. But. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> never heard that Immediately before. just start sucking cock. Like, um, no. So, yeah, I've seen trick or treat a long time ago, and I can't really tell you that I remember any of the stories. I remember Sack Boy, of course, but, uh, not Sack Boy, but the little pumpkin kid. Yeah, Sam. Sam, whatever name? I call him. I'll I remember. Call him sack boy I remember there was the one big planet. There was the um, one story about. I think it was like kids on a school bus that like went off a cliff or something, and like they were trying to hunt down the ghosts of these kids. And another one, there was like a Halloween party, and there was werewolves or something. Um, I don't remember too much from it either, but I remember liking it when I saw it. Yeah, it's I, okay. It was like in 2008, I, just, like, I think. Didn't think. I wasn't blown away by it, but I didn't hate it either, and it was. That's an R anthology that, but movie. But that's like the most modern anthology movie that I know of. Here's a question for you. Creep Show or Creep Show 2? The first one. Man, I, actually, I'm like I, actually, very much in the minority that I like Creep Show 2. But I like Creep I like, I like Creep Show 2 as well. I, the uh I like the story with the uh I think they're like on that boat. They're Everyone like... loves that. What is that? <laughs> the raft or whatever yeah, or something it's like, like everyone loves that story that's a good one i like the hitchhiker that one's good too thanks for the ride lady or or whatever he keeps saying like and there's like a couple of like crazy jump scares in that one that like got me even when i was like a seasoned horror guy that like yeah he like pops up in the back seat and i was just oh shit like yeah i i i think i like the first one a little bit better than the second one but i would have loved the first one like miles more than the second one if it was three stories instead of five because i don't think that all of them got the time that they needed in the so first one. like i don't remember a lot of them i remember the box the first one there's the box there's the one with... the box isn't yeah okay so the first story in the first one is the one where stephen king's the farmer right yes. and like or with wait is that the first one i think no the first one is the one with the like zombie dad with <sighs> I don't remember. It's like it's like his birthday or something, and like maybe not his, and like the stepmom or something. She's like a real bitch, and like I think she killed him to like inherit all of his stuff. And on his birthday, he comes back to life and kills her or something. I'm trying to. It's, it's been, been forever. It's been... I just remember that the first story in that. The dude comes out of the grave. He looks like shit, and like <laughs> he comes out of the grave. And it's his birthday. I remember that. And so, um, and then there's the the one where Stephen King's the farmer. I can't even remember what happens in that. He, the asteroid comes down. He thinks it's a space turd or something. And what? He starts growing like moss out of his body or something. Yeah, it's like the, the plants and everything. And then, um, and then there's the box, which was good. And then uh, I don't remember the other two. It's called the crate. I'm on the, the crate. Right okay. Yeah. The yeah. That's. I think it should have just been those three. Because what are the other two? Well, no, no. It, it should. They should have scrapped the one with the dad at the beginning. And because one of them was with um, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, okay. He, yeah. 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 yeah where that he, was um, really fucking good. Who does he bury in the beach? Or is he the one getting buried? He's burying someone in the beach. And yeah, he, like, but who has, is... has the gun? I think if someone was like, I can't remember. Um, I'm gonna. Have I, to I re- think I think it was his, his like it was either his wife who cheated on him, or it was the person 
that his wife. I'm gonna have to revisit that one because like I was really tired when I watched that, but like it was good. I remember that. Yeah, it was cool. And then um, what was the so other I think one? It What's just, the fifth one? The fifth one is just a dude getting attacked by cockroaches. Ugh. That's the one that should get scrapped. Th- that that should get scrapped, and the very first one okay, with the so Leslie the Nielsen, dad. the crate, and then and Stephen King. Stephen King. Um, and then the second one is the Indian, the wooden yeah. carving comes to life is the first story. Then it's the raft. And then it's, it's the, hitchhiker. The, the hitchhiker, yeah. Which I thought like the weakest one in that was the Indian, and but like still like pretty good. It was kind of like a slasher, like a m- condensed down slasher movie because it comes to life and kills like five people. Right, right. So like that was. Um, I think Creepshow Two is fun, funner. Speaking of which, of anthology horror movies, Twilight Zone movie. I still haven't watched that. I should probably watch that this year. Yeah, it showcases three remakes, I think, of the original show. I think they do three stories. It's the one with William Shatner on the plane. Yeah, obviously there's that one. And I think they make the monster look a lot better in the movie. I would, Yeah, well, one is a dude in a big furry suit, and the other one's like an actual like creepy-looking gremlin. Um, I think Spielberg directed that one, actually, uh, for for the remake. Um, but anyway, um, since this is our Halloween episode, we should talk about one of our favorite horror films of all time, which bears, are you the, ta- which are bears you, the same name. <laughs> are you t- No, are you talking about what I think you're talking about? What am I talking about? Saw 4? Saw 4, yeah. Oh, my 100. God. Thank God. I've been wanting to talk about Saw 4 on the podcast forever. I don't think I've seen Saw 4, actually. <laughs> Keep it that way. <laughs> like, I saw 1 and 2 and then the one with the dude from Linkin Park. But That's good. That's You're, good. <laughs> You're good. You're uh, good. Technically, after Saw 2, you can basically stop right there. Well, good, because I yeah. did. And I just wanted to and see the last And then you saw one. Saw 3D because Chester Bennington's in it. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, he was in it for like ten minutes. I think. Yeah, he like gets his <laughs> fucking back stuck to that car seat or yeah, something, and the yeah. skin peels off. Um, I've seen all of the Saw movies, and um, I don't. I'm not particularly proud of how I've spent my time <laughs> in in my life, but um, yeah, uh, Halloween. Are Weren't you, we are supposed you, are, to do a 15 phenomenal facts about this or next year? Next we were, year. but you. It's so hard to track you. You're always asleep or you're doing something. I don't know. I've what's only going slept on. for like five hours today, man. And I've been battling a bout of depression lately. And like, I, I don't want to get this podcast too dark. But um, I wanted to sleep for a lot longer than I did today. But I couldn't fall asleep this morning. And it's my first night sleeping alone in a while. So it was like, I really wanted to sleep for a long time today. Like, really just spread out on my bed. Anyways, um, Halloween. What do you want to say about Halloween? Greatest horror movie ever, in my opinion. Greatest horror movie ever, maybe. It's up for debate. Definitely the best slasher it's movie. definitely up for debate. I'd say, without a doubt, the best slasher movie. Ooh. Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, Halloween's way better. I, I think so, too, but like Nightmare on Elm Street's really fucking good. Depends who you, I mean, people, yeah, it depends who you ask. A lot but. of people really like Freddy, and I feel like there's a lot of people that could argue that like the slasher movie was kind of like, like sort of like Wes Craven, like took what was good about Halloween, and well, not about Halloween, but about the slasher movie, and kind of refined it, and did it again, put like an scream. original, and put like an original <laughs> twist on it. Yeah. Scream is really fucking good. I feel like a lot of people don't give that movie, like a lot of casual horror fans don't give that movie enough credit. But that movie is like really fucking good. The first Scream is. Yeah. It kind of becomes like a thriller at the end, but like. But the beginning scene is like iconic. Like one of the best of all time. Um, But yeah, Halloween, the first one is definitely one of the best horror films ever. Um, if you haven't seen it, I don't know where the fuck you've been your whole life. Miria. But... <laughs> she still hasn't seen it? We're going to watch it on Halloween. That's part of why we're doing a triple. I'm doing a triple feature on Halloween. Watching my movie. Oh, that's what I was getting into. I was watching my. I'm going to watch my movie. Then I'm watching Evil Dead 2. And then Halloween with her. Oh, man. So, it's a hell of a day. I'll probably. 
I'll probably doze off somewhere in like Halloween because I've seen it so many fucking times, but. Oh man, you're blowing up over yeah. there. Uh, DJ's texting me about the, uh, the game. Um, shit. What are you doing? He, Jared is now, because Jared is always playing with something. He's now broken a pair of fingernail clippers in his hand and is now trying to reassemble. Oh, I'm s- trying. Set. I've successfully reassembled them. Anyways, Halloween, uh, John Carpenter, 1978. Yes. And, um... Have you ever talked to people that saw this movie in theaters? It I seems, don't know anyone who's seen it in theaters. Oh, well, like if like some people. Seventy. Like, I, I've I talked to some adults that have saw this in theaters. My and, mom saw Friday the Thirteenth, um, the first three in theaters, but I don't think she saw Halloween in theaters. Why not the fourth one, man? I'm uh, too scared. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the fourth one's got the fucking. Uh, yeah, the fourth. The fourth. Crispin Glover. The, the fourth scene, like yeah, the fourth one's probably the best one out of those. I'd say it's between I don't know two, three, and four are all really good. The original Friday the Thirteenth is actually not a very good movie. The ending's good, but most of it is not. Yeah, the movie kind of sucks, honestly. <laughs> like, it's very not good. I'd say that like the good parts of the original Friday the Thirteenth are the um. The arrow, arrow through, um, fucking what's his face? Is Kevin name? Bacon. Kevin Bacon. I, you know what, man? Like, any other day, I would know that right on the top of my head. Today, for some reason, I'm like brain dead. But um, Kevin Bacon arrow through the neck. Um, and then the ending. The, like, yeah, the very ending. Like that's about like all that's good about the first Friday the Thirteenth. The second one has one of the best chase scenes I think I've ever seen. The final chase in that is like so like uh, like scary yet hilarious at the same <laughs> time. Like there's so many like um when she's like running down the trail or whatever trying to get away from him, all of a sudden he just fucking appears and just like jumps at her from like the forest, completely misses her. And just like rolls out of the frame, like, <laughs> just, oh, like it just he's gone. Like talking about it on the podcast sounds stupid, but it's like it yeah. is stupid and it's like stupid in real lie. life. Yeah, it's stupid in that. It's, it's movie. funny. Um, the third one is like just one of my personal favorites. I feel like was probably the first one to have like a good like pacing of like Jason just killing people a lot. Yeah, and then the fourth one is just great tom savini's back on special effects um got young fucking Corey Corey feldman Feldman going ape shit shaving his head bald yeah i don't know that's a good movie anyways halloween is my favorite not just my favorite horror movie all time that's my favorite movie of all time is halloween yeah i mean it's definitely in my top 10 i don't know if i'd put it as my favorite but (laughs) Hmm? blasphemy i know um not better than citizen kane what are you talking i actually do enjoy halloween a lot better than <laughs> citizen kane i actually do not care for that i haven't seen citizen kane yet i mean it's impressive and i appreciate citizen kane but that doesn't mean i like citizen kane it's like kind of like a filmmaker's film yeah it's a film for filmmakers well really the filmmakers teachers who slam it down your throat but most people today are just like, yeah, I, I appreciate what it did, but it's about a fucking sled. Dude just loves a sled. That's all it's about. Um, but I any- don't understand like how you could uh, come up with like some of the like how do you fit some of like the imaginative like stuff that it did, like well like kind of the innovative innovative is the right word that it did in a movie about a sled because i've read the premise of this fucking movie before and it's literally nothing well okay so the whole movie oh, this is such a far tangent from what we originally <laughs> planned on talking about today um but it's tr- long story short the premise of this movie is figuring out what charles foster kane's last words meant because the last word he said was rosebud even though no one was in the room with him 
and there was no video recordings of it that tell people what his last word was, but everyone knows that's what his last word was, even though he died by himself. And they're just trying to figure out what it is, and it was his childhood sled, because even though he had everything in the world, um, all he wanted was, like, his childhood, the innocence of his childhood back, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it has a lot of cool shots in it, um, but, I mean, nowadays there's a lot of movies with a lot of cool shots in it, so. And there's nothing scarier than how far off topic we can get. Nothing scarier than how far <laughs> off topic we can get. I'm never sending Jared an outline of what I want to talk about again because he'll just just go on so many tangents. No, Bring listen. Up Citizen Kane. That was listen. That was like the only off-topic tangent because like I talked about after midnight for a while, but <laughs> but in fairness, that is a horror movie. Citizen Kane is not, buddy. So keep that out of your fucking mouth. Okay. Whatever you say. Even though I brought it up. So, what do you? F- how do you feel about the Halloween sequels? Because every, because everyone, even if you haven't seen Halloween, you know it's a classic and and all around one of the best horror films ever made. But the sequels, depending who you ask, are an incredibly different story. I love the Halloween sequels. I do. I like. I'm probably in the minority here. Um. Halloween 2 is amazing. I love Halloween 2 Halloween as well. Halloween 2 is so fucking good. So and the- Halloween 2 kind of did what I talked about with After Midnight. Like, it kind of did that. Like, and like made this movie scary because Laurie Strode is all drugged up and like in a hospital and like she's like limping around. She can't really get around very well. And she's being stalked by Michael Myers the entire time. So like, like you kind of got the, uh, you kind of got the feeling that she is like not at her like full potential as right, opposed to right. like this super lady on crutches that's like doing a million miles an hour down a hallway on crutches, probably going faster than I can fucking run on two good legs. But um Halloween 2 was the first one where they said this is Michael Myers and this is his sister, yeah. right? That was that was yeah. cuz in the well, first they say it's Michael Myers in the first one well, even though he's cast as the shape. Well yeah, they say at the beginning Michael, and then it's like the Myers house, but they never are running around like, oh my god, it's Michael Myers. But in all the rest of the ones, I think everyone the cop knows says what- Michael Myers. I think that like some of the townspeople say Michael Myers, but Donald Pleasance or Doctor Loomis is always like evil. Yeah, like he's pure evil. And um, but the second and one, then is- he's cast as the shape. Yeah. And then um, the second one, they explain that Laurie Strode, which is weird to me. Sorry that I keep interrupting you. It's odd to me that he's the shape in the first one, because it seems like in the first one, he's never like he's never as human as he is in the first one. True. In the other ones, like in the first one, he's got a lot of grunting going on. Um, You see his face briefly yeah. like his mask comes off you see his face and um he's just a guy and um like and all the other ones he's completely dead silent he's more like immune to things like he gets shot eight times in the yeah. first one but like well the only other one that comes to the top of my head where he's human again is in number five when you see his face again you don't even, really see it but even he though takes it, his it, mask off yeah and cries but yeah but all the rest he's immortal emotionless just fucking i don't know crazy but um yeah so yeah second one's the first one where they do that it's definitely the first one where they're like you're his sister yeah because they're trying to kill you because in the first one it's laurie strode and then in the second one they explain that it was michael's little sister who was adopted by the strode family so it's laurie myers really yeah. which is the connection and what goes on between parts four and six is Michael Myers is trying to eliminate the rest of his relatives. Um, which is basically his niece, his niece, which Jamie, is Jamie. Yeah. Who's I'm assuming named after Jamie Lee Curtis. I would also assume that as well. Um, so that's in four through six. Um, and with those, which I like, I like those two. I, I enjoy them, but I can't say that they're good. If that makes sense. And I definitely feel that 
each one of those three gets worse. Like four is the best out of those, and then five is a little worse, and then six I think is absolutely horrible. But I mean, I appreciate it for what it is. I like all those. I I'm just like a, such a huge fan of of the character and and just the franchise that it's like four five four and five were like the first one I ever saw was two, and then I saw four and five because I saw all these on AMC Monster Madness, and um. Uh, I saw six. I think I even saw six before I saw the first one. Uh, believe it or not, like the first Halloween is one of the last ones that I saw. But six. All right. So four and five are good. I like those a lot. I don't like the masks in them. Those are like my, those are my only gripes with four and five. I hate the masks. The smiley mask that's in the in the fourth one, like he looks happy. Yeah, and his hair's like all because like basically his hair's just completely like whoosh, cause, like because basically what happened was in the fourth one Michael has to get um his costume back again because he was in a coma for a while like ten years or something so he has to go he kills like a mechanic and gets his boiler suit again and then he has to steal another mask from a store so I guess that kind of makes sense why the mask his hair light slick back because we don't know how long it's short too it's like yeah. shorter um but what doesn't make sense is that in the fifth one it's supposedly the same mask but it's a completely different mask and also doesn't he get like more buff in every movie <laughs> yeah he does <laughs> um i know that what's his, i think its name is don shanks plays him in the fifth movie and like he was at like Nightmare at Painesville before, and um, Hulk Hogan plays him in number six, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, I th- he looks kind of short in the sixth movie, but still kind of like buff. Um, he's kind of a pussy in the sixth movie. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. In the sixth movie, I like the sixth movie because I just think that. Um, the uh i think that the tone of the sixth movie movie like makes it for me i like this kind of some really creepy parts in that i like the mask in the sixth movie looks really good and um i don't know i just really like it but like i don't like the cult idea the, that's the, the that's the part that really ruins it cuz really until the sixth but movie but listen to me listen to me right now because like I don't know if you've ever seen the producer's cut. I've seen parts of the producer's cut. Like I haven't seen I like I know what's different. If you see what they did and they what they did for the theatrical cut of that movie from the producer's cut, they made it way fucking better. Yeah. Cuz the producer's, producer's cut, cut is fucking pathetic. That movie is terrible. I have a bootleg copy of it, and then it Do was. Do you really? Fi- yeah, I bought it before it was officially released, and it I, was, I didn't even know it was officially. Yeah, released. they have an official release in the Halloween Blu-ray set that I have. They have the producer's cut on Blu-ray, like fully restored. Oh man! And so, like, I can't. I don't know if I've watched it again on my Blu-ray or not, but um, I've definitely watched the bootleg, and it is not good. I think I watched the bootleg for one of my thirty-one days of horror, like way back. Way back. Yeah. But yeah, basically, um, the producer's cut was the original way, and then they had to go and reshoot a bunch of scenes because it was a fucking mess, and they couldn't show it in theaters the way that most mainstream audiences would want a Halloween movie. And in the producer's cut, um, at the end, he's stopped by like a bunch of stones on the floor, which negates by the Paul cult. Rudd. Paul Rudd puts some stones on the floor. Slits, and, his, slits his hand to put some blood on there. And just completely stops Michael Myers. But, I mean, the ending in the actual six version is kind of shitty, too, because Paul Rudd just beats the shit out of him with a pipe. And then that's it. But. What happens in the fifth one? Donald Pleasance fucking beats the shit out of him with a two by four. But then he gets put in jail. And, and then, then he escapes. And then he escapes. And this, this is the final thing that we see of michael myers in that who plays who plays the guy the the man with the hand the man with the hand or the man with the glove or whatever the guy he's got in four and five you always see his hand oh the the dude that's wearing the black yeah who plays so i don't know who plays him but he's dr win who was also in the first movie but he had like three lines or something he was one of 
Michael's doctors when he was in the the insane asylum or whatever. I feel like they got like a cool actor to play him. I can't remember um, what his name was. So you're gonna look that up. Yeah, just keep talking. Look, looking up. Um, so yeah, that's in the sixth movie. Um, and that's the last time we see Michael Myers in that six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Six percent. That's the last time we see him in that era of continuity. Is basically he gets beat up by Paul Rudd and then that's it. So then the movie after that H two O takes place right after the. Never fir- mind. It's nobody. Cool. It's no one cool. H two O takes place after the first movie and ignores everything or does it take place after the second movie and ignores I'm everything? I'm feeling like it's got to be the second movie. Because there's some parts that allude to it being the first because they I don't because they say he was never found which at the end of the first movie he fucking takes off and then the second movie he's in the hospital on fire so I don't know how he was never Do found. Do they say he's never found? I think so. I feel I just feel like it's kind of goes since the first and second movie kind of go together so well, because they all take place on, on the, the same, same night. Day, yeah. So like, um, the only thing that doesn't go well about them is that Jamie Lee Curtis kind of doesn't really look the same. But um, I don't know. I feel like that Halloween two still happened in the H two O like continuity. Or at least I'd like to think so because Halloween two is so good. Yeah. So it's <laughs> you like don't Halloween, want it to be erased. Yeah. Halloween, Halloween two, and then Halloween H two O. Is its then, own stream of. But then, Resurrects. Halloween Resurrection fucking rapes everything. The first twenty <sighs> minutes are cool. Yeah. Well, well, once Jamie Lee Curtis dies, it turns into not like a found footage because the footage isn't found, but it becomes sort of like a first person type of movie with all these kids who go into the Myers house as part of a reality show and they have like they're not GoPros but like it's cameras like on their heads and stuff. Um and Buster Rhymes is in it. Um I don't know, what do you have to say about Halloween Resurrection? Do I you, actually, do you do you like Halloween Resurrection? <laughs> <laughs> that, I a- actually do. But for what it is. Which to me is a comedy. So like <laughs> I mean, listen, dude, you got Michael Myers getting judo kicked by, not judo, because judo's grappling, but, like, karate kicked by a fucking Busta Rhymes, and, uh, like, you just kind of got to take it for what it is. I mean, I like that it did something different, I guess, and it didn't do the, because I would rather them try something different than just do the same stuff that hasn't worked in the past. I'm just glad they didn't send Michael Myers into space. No, they didn't jump the shark, like. Friday the 13th. Listen, sir. I remember actually being pretty ha- scared do of Do you Jason have anything Ghost. bad to say about Jason X? Because we'll have we'll come to blows right now. No, it's fucking hilarious. That I lo- movie I love Jason is X. incredible. And anyone out there that has anything bad to say about Jason X, you're a fucking poser. That's all I have to say about you. Because but- Jason X is like one of the best Friday the 13th movies since the original, in my opinion. And I actually like Jason Takes Manhattan too. Anyone that has that, anything, that's that's fucking funny too. But like anyone that has anything bad to say about Jason Takes Manhattan, you just don't understand. Like, you don't you don't get it. You don't get like horror movies. Like you you've probably watched like Nightmare on Elm Street and like Halloween. You've watched like all the masterpieces. You haven't delved into like the fucking like sewers bottom of the, the barrel the fucking bottom of the barrel bullshit pits of fucking horror movies that me and buddy have and don't understand like how entertaining a movie like jason takes manhattan is or like how entertaining jason x is or you know what in this case and that's why i like halloween resurrection i think that that applies to halloween resurrection yeah it definitely applies um how do you i f- don't like halloween resurrection as a halloween movie like when i'm talking serious halloween continuity i don't like it like that like i'm not gonna be like uh fucking like oh you know what i mean like if you think of halloween resurrection as like kind of like a fan fiction like a funny fan fiction <laughs> then <laughs> it's like really fucking good and if that's you really what i consider th- halloween 2 like the remake is just funny fan fiction to me oh it's so bad though i think that movie is hysterical i the kills are hysterical but like the, the whole thing with the white horse and everything like the thing about that movie is that i feel like it tries to take itself too seriously and if it didn't maybe i would like it more 
but I, I mean, it does have a serious, to- a very serious tone. Like if it would have gone all silly, I would have liked it better. Um, but I think it's the funny. deaths are really over the top. Yeah. And you know what I like about Halloween two is the uh, like the beginning, the homage to the original Halloween two. That whole hospital sequence that they do there yeah, yeah. is amazing. I loved that. And then like once she woke up from that dream or whatever, I was like. This movie's about to suck. Like, just I just felt it, it like in my fucking like chest. Is like as soon as they fucking, as soon as she woke d- up. D- doesn't Michael Myers go to a strip club in that movie? I think he's outside of a strip club. And I he thought likes, he murdered like a hooker in the bathroom, like slamming her against the mirror. Maybe I know that like outside of the strip club, he like stomps the dude's face <laughs> in. I that's like the one kill I remember, and um, I don't know. Rob Zombie, why couldn't you make the whole movie like you did the hospital part of that? Would have been incredible. It was it was tense. It was fucking in the hospital, like the original Halloween two. It was I don't know, it was scary, man. Like and like it had me at the edge of my seat. But I guess you can't start the movie like and just keep it going like the whole time. Like I don't know. I don't know either, man. Dan- obviously, obviously, we skipped um, Halloween three. Halloween three, but um, if you know why, then you know why. Um, it doesn't have anything really to do. It's a good movie. I like Halloween three a lot, actually. Um, but it doesn't really fit with the rest of the. I actually haven't revisited Halloween three since my Michael Myers fanboy stage. So I didn't like it when I first watched it, but like now when I see clips of it, I'm like, you know what? This is probably pretty fucking good, and it has Tom Atkins in it. And um, who plays the the? I don't know main actors. I don't know actors' names, man. man You're I always asking it, me these actors' names, and I don't know. I think it might be, um, that one guy. That one guy. What the, was he? What was he from? The guy that plays like all those villains. Oh, and villains. Hmm. Um. Um. Maybe not. Maybe not. For some reason, I thought it was like either the old man from RoboCop or um, freaking, yeah, the old man from RoboCop. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, so, yeah, it's also the last week of our special this month. It's getting a little, uh, it actually is kind of hot out today. And that's because we're getting closer to Halloween and, and Halloween, everyone knows is when the cocks are the hardest <laughs> in October. So, um, since Halloween is right around the corner, um, we figured we would talk about some horror hey, I films. wanted to ask you something All before right, we get into this. Ahead. Do you think Stephanie still listens to our podcast? I don't know. I haven't heard from her in a while. Stephanie, if you're listening, let us know. Um, but anyway, before we get into all of this, um, I think we need to set some ground rules for our horror villains talk what does it have to be are we talking specifically horror films or are we talking characters that just do bad things in movies hmm. because it's a fine line because all right so let's let's think of a movie for example american psycho it's a horror movie you see me i consider it just a crime drama with some thriller. You can, you can consider From that, but, like, here's the, but here's the thing, is that, like, um, to me, it's a horror movie, but, like, it doesn't, it's, like, an untraditional horror movie that it follows the killer, like, the entire time. So, like, but there are other horror movies like that, like Maniac, Maniac. um, freaking Ed Portrait of a Serial Killer. Mm-hmm. And um, let's see here. Um, Disturbed. I believe that's the name of the movie. I watched it last year. It was good. Usually these movies turn out pretty fucking good. Um, but yeah, so like, it's kind of like a satirical horror movie. Like, because I mean, just like there's the scenes where like he's chasing the girl down the with the chainsaw and everything I don't think it's a drama at all 
Well, I don't, I don't mean like a drama, like it's a heartfelt fucking thing. I think it's like a crime drama thriller. I'd say that the probably the closest you could get would be like to not horror would be like a thriller comedy. Well, it's definitely a dark comedy for yeah. sure throughout. But um, I still consider it a horror movie, and um, just because of kind of like the horrific things that are portrayed in the movie and I know that there's a lot of people out there that like see like myself I don't really consider like Last House on the Left a horror movie but a lot of people do I consider it a revenge thriller because nothing really like scary ever happens in it you know what I mean like yeah there's rape but then like the most of the movie kind of focuses on the parents getting revenge for their daughter who was raped I don't know. What are your thoughts on Last House on the Left? I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen Last House on the Left. Okay, I think, I think I, is isn't that a remake? I think I saw like the there's first, a remake I think of I, it, but the original was by Wes Craven in the seventies. See, I think I've seen the remake. Okay, but I haven't seen the original one. Just like Hills Have Eyes, I haven't seen the, the original. remake. Probably had some more kind of horror vibe to it. Maybe, maybe maybe made the parents I haven't seen the remake yet but it probably made the parents seem a little bit more psychotic probably have more whorish music darker environments and stuff like that I'm not sure the original was very 70s and it had very 70s music it was very like daylight out most of the time and like the parents were just kind of pissed and killed people yeah um I uh but I consider American Psycho a horror movie. I do think it qualifies, which basically screws me at this point. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Do you want first pick? Do you want first pick? I'll take first pick since you won the month already. <laughs> it's like... I Let's not get into it yet. Anyways. Um, if you would have said, if, if said no, you would have saved yourself. But since you said American Psycho qualifies... And I have first pick. Hmm. I don't know, but let's just get Maybe it. Maybe I should. You know what? Let's do that. All right. I think American Psycho is a horror movie. That aside, we all know that Patrick Bateman is the sexiest fucking horror movie villain. Like, if if we're talking a very practical, like, very, if like, you, if you a go- very traditional sense of sexy... It, which I feel like a lot of our voters have gone for, like this entire month, they've gone for that as opposed to like. Do you want him as your pick? You can say yes. Do you want him as your pick? I think that because, it'll, because I it, think that it'll be more fun if we take him out of it completely. If we what, just what, both what, what, agree. What, what if I have one that could counter it? <laughs> what do you have to counter Patrick Bateman? <laughs> what if I said Ryan Reynolds in Amityville Horror? Is he the villain though? Yeah, he gets possessed and he fucking tries to kill everyone. I see, to me, he's a victim. The house is the villain in that movie because it's the Amityville house. is. is and that's really why I'm demon. saying we should lay some ground rules to this because I was also going to bring him up after what qualifies as a and, horror movie. And I would probably lose if I said this, but I, and it doesn't make any sense because first off, listen, Batman is sexier than fucking Aquaman. <laughs> like, buddy, I feel like even you know that. I don't. I don't know who the fuck James Mom- Momoa is. Whatever you put in the poll, but James. <laughs> well, I tried to sabotage it. Like you tried to say, no. This is um, why Jared. I don't know where I left off. Well, all right. So you don't know who James Momoa is. Yeah, you sabotage the blog. I mean, you sabotage the poll. It's I sabotage nothing. James Momoa is probably sexier than Jason Momoa, and that's why they voted for him. And it beside, completely besides the point. So listen. So our, you people out there, like, I don't want to call out the viewers or the listeners, but you're all stupid. You're all idiots, and I fucking hate all of you. Batman is the sexiest superhero. Hands the fuck down. Hands the fuck down, buddy. So, but this week, Jared's very upset. He's lost every week so far. Um, this week we're talking horror villains. We're excluding Christian Bale. 
from this. Because, like, look, maybe Ryan Reynolds would beat him because our voters are really fucking stupid. But it's just like, I just think that me and you could both agree right now that, in fact, Patrick Bateman is the sexiest horror movie villain. If you consider it a horror movie, yes. Yeah, I mean, he's just freaking, he's so sexy that he doesn't even look at the girls that he's fucking. He just looks at himself while he's having sex with them in one of the most hilarious scenes in horror movie history. I also know someone else that could be your pick. I know two. Um, I was thinking maybe that I could counter it with just general Dracula. That's not what I was thinking at all. But, that's not what I was thinking at all, but, but okay. that could go so fucking bad. Like I would be like, all right, buddy, I'm just going to have to go Dracula thinking like maybe Christopher Lee Dracula, or maybe just like the idea if, if you've seen, of Dracula, if you've but seen, then you would be like, yeah, I'm taking Christian Bale in American Psych. You got pictures of fucking Christian Bale shirtless and everything. And then you have Nosferatu and Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> With the fucking like Princess Leia buns. Have you seen the Franklin Jella ver have you seen the Franklin Jella version of Dracula? Is that the like it's shot in- for shot remake of, of No. No? No, no, no. Um it's from the seventies, the ending is completely ridiculous. Um but Dracula was very attractive in that movie. <laughs> but um ooh, ooh. ooh, anyway. Um but no, that's not there are basically the shorts two- got a little bit tighter while you're watching that movie. There's basically only two people I think you could pick for this. I'm not going to mention either of them, and I'm going to let you have first pick because whatever one you don't pick, because there's only two options here, whichever one you don't pick, I'm going to pick. You have first pick this week because I feel fucking bad for you. Anyway, let's just talk about some. Uh, some I'm whole- not even going to think of these guys because like I've been thinking about this for weeks, <laughs> and I'm just like, Buddy's got first pick, and if he goes American Psycho on me, I'm fucked. You, you have first pick. American Psycho is excluded. You can have first pick this week. But let's just talk about some attractive horror villains. And we're going to start with Chucky. How do you feel about so, Chucky? So, Team Tiger Awesome just did this kind of, basically. <laughs> did they, they made really? a bracket where they were trying to think of sexiest Halloween costumes. And, like, Chucky won the whole fucking bracket. Did he really? Well, because what they were doing was they were altering the costume. Like, so, they're basically like, what could you dress up as? Those iconic horror. Dress up as it. For Halloween, but you could alter the costume to be sexy. And so what they did was they took the Chucky costume, they did like the overalls, but oh, I they got you. Did, okay. cut it into I got Daisy. You. They cut it into Daisy Dukes, and they like completely vaselined. Oh all, like, man! All over. <sighs> Woo! It's getting super sexy. But um, yeah. So Chucky won the whole thing. What do I think about Chucky? But we're not talking costumes, so we're talking straight villains. We're, we're talking straight villains. up real Chucky. So Chucky's probably had more sex than most of the horror villains that are in the bracket. Yeah. In the movies. So I feel like that just kind of gives him like an edge there in sexiness. Is Jennifer Tilly that he's yeah. having sex with? Yeah. The doll version of the Jennifer doll Tilly. Version. But his, um, a, his human form was having sex with actual Jennifer Brad Tilly. Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif. <laughs> We know the name now. Well, you... I knew it at one point too. Yeah. But I just kind of slipped yeah, my we, mind yeah, the one day. Yeah, we slipped both of our minds. But um, anyways, yeah, Brad Dourif, Dourif or whatever. What is his name in the actual movie? Is Charles? I, I don't know. Charles Lee Ray is his. Sure. Na- yeah, Charles Lee <laughs> Ray was having sex with Jennifer Tilly, who I don't remember her character's name in the movie at all. So, Chucky, kind of sexy. How about <laughs> so? How about uh, Leatherface? Leatherface is, <laughs> I. <laughs> you wouldn't fuck Leatherface. I I don't think I'd fuck Leatherface. I feel like you could fuck Leatherface, depending on what face he was wearing that day. On whose face? <laughs> like so, like maybe he killed fucking Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, yeah, I'd and be he's down gonna with put that. Out Jennifer Aniston's face for S- you. Speaking of Jennifer Aniston. How about Leprechaun? Let's throw Leprechaun in the mix here. How do you feel about Leprechaun? Are you into midgets? Apparently. <laughs> like, I feel like this came up on the podcast last week. We did. We did. A couple weeks ago. I, I can't remember. The bald I think it was week. last week because Jake was in here. No, it was the bald week. It had to be the bald week. Was, was it? Jo- jo- Danny DeVito, George Costanza, uh, Mini-Me. Last week we were talking about superheroes, and I was just talking about bestiality the whole time. Okay. With Beast Boy. Well, whatever. So, yeah. Uh, Leprechaun. 
I'm having trouble finding ways that you could f make Leprechaun sexy. Does he have gold? Is he rich? So, Didn't, do, you hold think on, bribery, hold on. do you think bribery is sexy? Maybe. In in the latest iteration of Leprechaun, wasn't he played by Hornswoggle? Yes. Have you seen those? No. It was just the one. It was just, it the was one just one. By WWE Films, and he was not sexy. <laughs> um, let's see. What other horror villains? Um, well, we just talked about him for like a fucking Michael hour. Michael Myers, yeah. How sexy is Michael Myers? Now, I will sit here. I will say Michael Myers is pretty fucking sexy. Yeah, I would have to concur. I mean, I'm really into that boiler suit. and He's, he's buff! He's pretty buff in four through six. He's, he's pretty buff. buff. And he's got nice hair. <laughs> and number nice four, he has nice slick back hair. Yeah, nice slick back hair. Um, He's pretty... He's clean cut in four. And, um, yeah. And in the first one, if you're into William Shatner, then, like... Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of some that are, like, out of left field here. Um, Jason, how is the, how is that out of left field? It's that not, goes hand in hand with Halloween. But we need to talk about it. How sexy is Jason? Jason is ugly as fuck. <laughs> so you wouldn't fuck Jason? He's a zombie. What about pre-zombie Jason? The one where you, <laughs> where he's just a retard. No, <laughs> that's even uglier. You think the just retard Jason is uglier than zombie Jason? He looks like sloth. Do you not remember when he took his mask off in fucking <laughs> Takes Manhattan and his face was just like, <laughs> just like all over the fucking place? You'd rather uh, have sex with that than the thing that jumps out of the lake in the first one. No, the thing that jumps out of the lake in the first one is the most sexy. The most sexy. I, I think Baghead Jason is the sexiest. Just baghead. keep the bag on his head. From part two, yeah, the burlap sack. That's the one I thought you were talking when you said, like, retard Jason. Well, he's a retard, like, his entire lifespan, even this as a zombie. This is a very PC. We shouldn't be talking about <sighs> mental illness. Listen, I understand that, and I'm not trying to, like, lose listeners over this or anything, but that's what Jason is. And I feel like he's since... He's mentally handicapped. Fine. Do we really have to go like extremely PC when we're talking about horror movies right now? No, especially when we're talking about dudes that we want to fuck in horror movies. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just don't think that we do. So, like, all right. So, I'm sorry. So I'm not targeting like a, a real person. I'm not saying you're like, hey, you're a retarded. Like, no, Jason, he's a retard. <laughs> so, how about Jason Voorhees? How about Robert England in the Nightmare series? So, Freddy Krueger. Why don't yes. you just say Freddy Krueger? I don't know, man. You're the one that's always talking. Who's this random actor that played an old dude in RoboCop? You're the one always saying actors' names. So I said an actor's name. I'm. I sorry. need to memorize that guy's name because I think he's in every movie, but he's not <laughs> in any movies. He's in no movies. He's in Guyver, and he's in RoboCop. And so, um, man, RoboCop two, and then I think they changed the old man for RoboCop three. So, anyways, um. Jason Voorhees not sexy. Freddy Krueger, man, I'm going kind of sexy on Freddy Krueger. Yeah, it's and he's got he's got a sense of humor too. He's so got it's a good not, sense so of not, fashion. So it's not just looks. That yeah. striped shirt. I mean, I'd wear that sweater. Good, like, sure. good fitting pants. The like the fedora, yeah. or whatever, or the bowler cap, or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I wouldn't let him finger you, but no, his fingers aren't going anywhere near my asshole. No, but um. Plus, here's the thing they brought up on Tink Tiger Awesome is that Freddy, like, knows your dreams. So, like, he could probably reach into, like, your deepest, darkest fantasies and, and like, be whatever bring them you want. To life. Yeah. You know what I mean? You so, do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So Freddy I didn't Kruger's, even consider that. Yeah. Freddy Krueger is pretty sexy. So that's a pretty good pick, actually. Yeah. But it can't compete with who your pick probably is going to be. But. Buddy, I really absolutely have no idea. Actually, you... actually, I don't even know if the one I think that you should pick counts as a villain. It's again. It's more like a tragic kind of story. Um, but he, ends, he, ends, he ends up doing some bad things. Well, yeah, you have first pick, so I guess I can bring him up. How about Brundlefly pre-fly form? Oh shit! So um, yeah, I don't know. Well, does it when you say as, Brundlefly, does it count as a villain? <sighs> he is kind of tragic. Like, I don't know if he counts as a villain, but he's as close to a villain as that movie has. 
really. I'd say at the end, he's pretty fucking villainous. The only person I think that could compete with him is also a tragic person. So maybe, I don't know. But see, if I wanted to go Brundlefly, maybe I could just go Jeff Goldblum and Mr. Frost. As Satan? (laughs) As Satan, yeah. I don't know. I'd get Aubrey's vote if I picked anything with Jeff Goldblum in it. For sure. Um, how about Mila Kunis in American Psycho 2? We're talking... We're talking dicks here, I know, I know. Um, but... How about the Babadook? Would you do the Babadook? Or would you let the Babadook do you? The Babadook me? Babadook you? Oh, man. I don't like that movie. I thought it was a little overrated. Can't lie. Yeah. Um, Um, If it wasn't so hyped for me, I probably would have liked it a little better. But... How about... Tobin Bell in the Saw series. No. (laughs) Absolutely not. Okay. um, How about the first zombie in Night of the Living Dead? It's a little stupid, but I'm into that. (laughs) I could get get down with that very first zombie. The very... uh, God, what's his name? I can't... It's it's escaping me. I we know, just don't know any names. I actually Never know. Bring I up actually a name. know his name because he's in um, Flesh Eater, the movie they did in the '80s where he's like the zombie again, and um, he's like the main zombie, and he just goes around eating people. That's literally the whole movie. He just goes around eating people. Damn, damn. Um, how about um, Tom Savini? When he turns into a vampire. In Dust Till Dawn. In Dust Till Dawn. Oh, I can get down with that. Yeah. Yeah. Who is he? Love Machine in that? Or Sex Machine. Sex Machine. Sex Machine. Yeah. Wow, it doesn't get any sexier than Sex Machine. No, not at all. Um, How about just all the gremlins? Are you into that? You're into bestiality? I don't know, man. You brought up Beast Boy. Oh, man. I'm just trying to bring up ones that are out of left field, man. Yeah, well, listen. Uh, you want out of left field. How about The Thing? What does he look like? Isn't, I have, I, isn't I, he I, a I, shapeshifter? Yeah, but I want, what does he actually look like? Some sort of alien. Well, what is he how about like? the xenomorph? It's got that tongue. <laughs> it does have that tongue. I bet the xenomorph could give... How about Godzilla? W- wicked head. Wicked head. Godzilla. Godzilla's sexy. <laughs> I mean, but does Godzilla have a cock? I have not seen one. I feel like Godzilla's disqualified. Doesn't have a cock. No cock. Sorry, Godzilla. You definitely win this competition hands down. All right, you have first pick. You can either go for an irony factor or you can pick Jeff Goldblum or you can pick someone we haven't talked about. Or you can talk about someone we have talked about, but you have first pick nonetheless. So who are you going with? This is tough. Like my whole fucking, uh, my whole, uh, I know that you have someone in the back of your mind. No, I have a couple that I could pick that I'm thinking of picking, but it depends on who your pick is. Like, I feel like my best bet is to go the irony factor here. But that's what I've gone with, like, most weeks. And then if you go with irony factor, like, say you fucking say uh, Jason Voorhees or something. And then I actually say someone who is attractive. Yeah, exactly. And then you get absolutely it, murdered. I would so, get... so so second pick is actually the advantage here. Well, no. <laughs> Which is why your, I'm letting... Take your first pick, buddy. Take no, I'm not taking the first pick. Take the first pick. No, because I don't know... Because that's the thing. I don't know who I want to pick. And one, one of the picks I was thinking about, I don't even know counts or not. Because it's a tragic tale. Brundlefly, we'll just we'll just throw it out. So no Brundlefly. Yeah, no Brundlefly. Just it's too uh, too too close to home. Okay, so so I'll bring up this one person, but only if we decide who's having first pick or who if who if well if I have first pick, I will say who's been in the back of my mind as a possibility. But if you have first pick. I'm not gonna say it, cause then you, cause then you might pick it and fuck me over. All right. So if I have first All right, pick, go, go. Anthony Perkins in Psycho. I've considered him. Horror villain or tragic tale? 
It doesn't count. Poor villain. Poor villain, and it counts. And and uh, I have first pick, so that's my pick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Anthony Perkins and Psycho is your pick. And so... <sighs> and he's who I thought could complete with Jeff Goldblum, but you threw it out. So, good luck. <laughs> Yeah. And now you can't pick him in Mr. Frost either because that's a cop out. Whoa, hey, hey, it's not a cop out. This is my secret weapon. Anthony Perkins and Psycho. I, see, like, the thing, I've thought about him before, but, like, I kind of eliminated him because it's just like. I was just always assuming you were going to go fucking Patrick Bateman and, like. No, because that's, cause that's, again why I brought up the ground rules at the very beginning because that could have very well have been my pick. Yeah, it would have fucking just dominated everything, but, like, so... This has been, I've been thinking about this episode for weeks. That's why I've had all of these What questions. if I countered it with Vince Vaughn? Psycho. Go for it. <laughs> I'm nuts. I'm nuts. I can go I for it. I would lose my mile. No one's voting for Vince Vaughn fucking... <laughs> Vince Vaughn fucking uh, Norman Bates. <laughs> oh, God. What if I went Hannibal Lecter? Um, no, no. I'd tweet the worst pictures of him from Red Dragon if oh you think that. Oh, God. All right, so. <laughs> Man. Go with uh, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I could go with uh, Dracula. But I'd have to specify it as a very specific Dracula. Who is the vampire in Interview with a Vampire? I don't even know if you can count those as villains. Are they not villains? Is there I mean, not, not a villainous vampire in that movie? I mean, it's a va villain against another vampire. I mean, it's not... Who's the villainous vampire in Interview with a Vampire? Well, there's the one that... So basically, there's two main vampires in Interview with a Vampire. One is Brad Pitt, who is a vampire who sort of is trying to rebel from vampirism. He doesn't think it's right. And then there's Tom Cruise, is who, the inter is the who is, plays Lestat, who loves being a vampire. But I wouldn't necessarily say either of them are the villain against each other, especially because Tom Cruise is barely in that movie at all. Um, but Tom Cruise is the one you're thinking of. Okay. Well, listen. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say Pazuzu. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am going to look at the Lost Boys and pick which one I think is the sexiest one. Just uh, pick Heather Sutherland. He's the only one that people are going to know. Isn't he the, the main one? Yeah. And, like, he's not even that hot. He's kind of got a chubby face. I'm fucked, man. I'm just fucked. You could pick Leprechaun. <laughs> I could go Michael Myers and just hope that the mystery, like, fucking, like, gets gets me over on this one. I'm going to have to go with Christopher Lee Dracula. All right. I'm going to lose. <laughs> He's just, You're not a stranger to losing, so. His face is too long and narrow. <laughs> like, so why would you pick him? <laughs> Oh, maybe I'm going to have to back. No, it's too late now. It's not. It's, it's way too late. Then I can change mine, too, if I want. No. No, I no, just... No, you're too late. You said that's your pick. Christopher Lee Dracula versus Anthony Perkins. The end. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going Michael Myers. <laughs> Michael Myers versus Norman Bates. Sexiest horror villain. All right, since that you've... How about I give you two chances to win? I'll put all three of them in the poll, and we'll see what happens. I get two shots? You get two shots. All right. I'll let, I'll let it happen. Let since, it happen. Yeah. All right. So check it out on Twitter. Vote for the poll. Um, we've been going on forever. So this is Buddy the Bruiser, and we'll see you next week. This is Dynamite Jared signing off. Thanks for listening, guys.